everybody. <laughs> this is my, I call it the Kickapult, right? So this is one of the little training devices that I made. And uh, it's supposed to represent um, somebody that's like six foot, six foot 15 or so, like most of these out here. I live in the land of giants, you know, Scandinavian big Viking guys. I'm the only Welsh guy out here. Anyway, um, this uh, basically is, is, it represents somebody that's about six foot tall kicking, right? And so in Wing Chun, uh, the martial art that I do, we have to get past the kick, past the, past the kick to the body. And so what we use this device for you know, I made it so it's kind of got the um, counterbalance on it, right? And I even have some springs on the top and some springs on the bottom if I want to hook it up and, and make it even tougher to, to move, right? Um, but what we do is we, we practice, you know, being at the, at the edge of that range and how to basically, you know, come in and attack that leg you know, right on the inside of the knee. The knee's right here, and the shin's right here. And of course, if it's a roundhouse kick coming, then that shin, you know, the foot would be turned towards me, but then that shin would, is the most dangerous, most dangerous part, you know, part of the foot and that shin. Um, and so on Wing Chun, instead of staying back here and dodging around, you know, when that kick comes up, we slide right in and we just attack the inside of that leg and come straight into the body, right? So we, we take when somebody is basically standing on one foot and whether it's a spinning kick or whatever, it doesn't matter because if we're out here, we're gonna get hit with the full force of that spin. Um, and so a lot of things that for some reason, Taekwondo and karate people haven't figured this out. I don't know why. Maybe it's against the rules when they spar. But when somebody throws a kick, if you just come in, half of that power is gone, if not two-thirds of that power. But, you know, because they've been kicked, they're so afraid that they're too afraid to get hit. So they're out here in the danger zone, right? And so what we do is we come in... And we have these angles with the forearm where we can bounce, bounce that knee or the inside of that thigh and then launch right into the, the opponent, okay? So we practice, you know, different drills of how to move in quickly and kind of, you know, uh, close the gap really quickly as that's happening. Uh, and then the the other thing that we use this for, you know, uh, we'll, we'll actually do what they, what, what they call intercept kicks, where we intercept, we kick the kick, and then we come in. And then we also do different drills with our arms on this. Because it represents this, this weight of it falling down and forward is almost the same as like a punch coming forward. And so we use some of our same Wing Chun tools to intercept and to bounce that energy away, you see. So Wing Chun, we use angles in our arms that are at 135 degrees. And what that does is when force meets that angle, it won't collapse. The force goes all the way through into the arm and into the body. Where if I had any other position and that force came, it would collapse. It would collapse and hit me. But we use this uh, 135 degrees and then again 135 degrees with the wrist. And what we do is it's got the bone structure so it won't collapse. And we put it out there kind of quickly, right? But relaxed and when it's relaxed no matter how powerful a punch is coming if it's a karate punch that 
oh, you know, they're throwing everything into it. Yeah, you know, and it's extremely stiff and powerful. Well, it doesn't matter. It's as, as powerful as it comes, if we are relaxed, we can bounce that power and ricochet it and bounce it right away. So that's what we do here is we learn how to use that relaxed power to bounce that force away, right? Because all we need to do is just alter it maybe an inch or two off its trajectory, and then we can move straight in. See, Wing Chun, we don't, we don't do a whole bunch of, you know, big moves coming, you know, at angles. We come in and then we go right to the quickest, straightest way to put the power into the opponent. Anyway, so I was just going to talk about this tonight. And so we can actually train some of our, our hand tools with this, even though it's a leg, right? But we train our Tan Sao, our Bong Sao, our Folk Sao, right? Our Gan Sao, our Jom Sao, and even our punches. Right, and so it's kind of a fun little uh, tool that I set up, a little bit different than the wooden dummy, uh, but just so we get used to that idea of how far we need to be away from an opponent and when they throw that kick, then how much distance we have to traverse to come in and to be effective and then possibly how much distance to come out, right? Uh, so then uh, we're safe. <laughs> we're in the safe zone. Okay, well, thanks for joining me.